Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at one of my personal most anticipated knives of the year. That is the Kaiser Delorme. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 6.75 inches with the blade length coming in at 2.875 inches. This cutting edge is 2.75 inches with a blade width of 0.625 inches. Blade thickness on this guy is 0.12 inches with blade material of CPM 20 CV. So some very premium steel on this guy here. We have a really nice Warren, Warren Cliff style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 3.875 inches with a handle thickness at 0.48 inches. We have a handle width coming in at 0.875 inches. Handle material on this one is G10, locking mechanism of a liner lock with a very good lockup. Um, user is right hand only tip up carry, a weight coming in at a very light 2.16 ounces. Price of $119 and designed by the one and only Justin Lundquist, who has become, I have to admit, one of my favorite designers. And uh, this knife here is a perfect example of why. Now, let's take a look at some size comparisons here, because this knife is uh, very much in the medium size realm. First off, I'm going to get a couple... Uh, a couple out of the way that I think just really give an overall good length comparison and overall size because so many people know these knives. That is the Civivi Elementum as well as the Benchmade Bug Out. Now, as far as Zergos and all that stuff go, it's obviously not very close, but I just wanted you guys to see just what we have here in terms of width and thickness and, and length. I think those two knives are probably two of the best to, to give you a good idea of that. But now I have a couple knives or uh, really a, a couple pairs of knives that are much more along the lines of this guy right here. And we'll start off with a very popular one. This is the uh, Pena X series Apache front flipper, as well as the, um, this is the Tom, oh God, it's the Tom Mayo MTNT Mach 3 from Wingman EDC. Very underrated front flipper. Thought we'd keep it in the front flipping realm here. And as you can see, uh, very similar to the Pena in terms of overall length and width. Uh, Pena is a little thicker, but you have uh, pretty good comparisons there. And this knife here is just, oh, it's just an excellent front flipper. Keep an eye out for him in EDC. They, they do some pretty awesome designs. Um, now, the last pair I got here is probably the two most... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say most comparable, but they're Justin Lundquist designs. And it's so interesting to follow Justin's designs because he is one of the most unique designers in terms of design language in the entire knife industry, in my opinion, because he's really, really good at designing knives and a good amount of knives and making them very different. You know, every designer has their own language of, you know, you can look at a design and say, oh, that's a Vox or, oh, that's an Elijah Isham or, you know, maybe, oh, that's a Rick Hinder. Some people could say that. Um, you, It's harder to say that with Justin Lundquist because there's a couple of things he has going. For example, the, the, the little notches here or the, the, the little... I don't know what we'll call them, but they're not really notches, but similar design styles, little touches of flair on their knives. But as you can see, these are, th first of all, these are three fantastic knives. I mean, three excellent knives, but they're so different. There's no way if it didn't have the Justin Lundquist mark on the other side of it, there's no way that you could say, oh, these are all Justin Lundquist designs if you weren't, you know, really familiar within the designers in the knife industry. He does just a fantastic job of designing unique knives with unique blade shapes. And really the only thing that these ones have in common is they're about the same length and they're all front slash top flippers and that's it. But they, they all look great. I just, I'm really loving what he's doing. And I, I'm sure he's going to keep it up and I really hope he keeps it up because he is on a roll right now. Now, let's get into this knife here, and let's start with the blade. 
it is one of the most unique blade shapes of the year, in my opinion. And that gets to be more and more impressive as time goes on because God only knows there's more knives coming out than ever before. And you see a lot of knives that are at least similar. You know, a drop point is a drop point is a drop point, right? Um, with a different swag, maybe a fuller here and there. But he came out with this just absolutely sick razor style Warncliffe blade that also has a bit of a razor's edge. My calipers took a crap on me. I got to get another pair. But I would, after doing some cutting tests, I and just kind of feeling the edge here, I would definitely venture to say this is somewhere in the realm of eh, 13 to 16 thousandths. I would probably say if I had to guess, I'd probably say right around 15 or 16 thousandths. Um, but sometimes the readings come out thinner than I would even think. But this is an excellent edge. Um, fantastic for EDC use. And it just looks amazing. I mean, it really does have that good razor's look. Um, two things that are both purely aesthetic on this knife, but give it so much character, in my opinion, is, is the little swedge up here along with the fuller. That absolutely makes this blade as, in terms of aesthetics because if you took that away, you just have a, a full flat grind, which would still be a very efficient cutter, but it just wouldn't have the, the sass and class that this guy has without these. Really, really like the touch that those made. Um, another thing that is not purely aesthetic and is absolutely perfect is this top flipper tab here. Why am I focusing issues? Here we go. This top flipper tab here is legitimately perfect. Now, this is a top flipper. There has to be a distinct, a distinguish somewhere between top flippers and front flippers. Front flippers, the tab is going to be more towards the front of the knife. Um, you know, something along the lines of his Black Void Opus to where this is a front flipper. The flipping tab is towards the front of the, the blade when it's closed, you know, in the position of the hand. This is definitely a top flipper, and that's fine because i tell you what, it feels and acts like a front flipper, but just a little different. And this jimping, oh, this jimping is perfect. It's all placed perfect. We'll get more about that in the action, but just absolutely love what he has going on there. Um, another thing that I really, really, really the only issue I have with this blade, it really is the only issue because aesthetically and functionally and design wise, it is just knocked out of the park. This marking here from Kaiser, how, how does that happen? That's so annoying to me. It, so you got the 20 CV marking and then the model number. I, I don't mind either one of those two things being on there. I, I think we all want the steel marking, but the model number, it's whatever, it's fine. But look at that. It's it's just sloppy. You close the knife and you still see it, you know, sticking out there. <sighs> Move it in, guys. Get it online. You know, back here, this is centered, spaced perfectly. The JL design, maker's mark is good. But then you just, it's, it's even going on to the, the, um, the chamfering or the, the, the crown of the spine here. The spine is slightly crowned or at least chamfered, but you got the text going out onto that. It just doesn't look good. And it's really, really annoying. I, this knife at $119, you know, it's, it's an extremely good value for what you're getting, but then you, you kind of knock the quality of it down with that. And I know it's just aesthetic. I know it's not going to affect the performance, but you know, I mean, just a little more attention to details, all I'm asking. It, it would look so much better. It would, it, I mean, once this is one of those things too, once you see it, you can't unsee it. So I'll let it go now, but it's really annoying. It's the only thing that I was like, dang, you know, darn it. It was almost, it was almost flawless and you got that. But regardless, only bad thing I have to say about this blade because everything else, functionally speaking, is on point and fantastic. Handle and ergos. So for the neutral shape of this, and it is very neutral, um, it does get a little, obviously a little slimmer up here and swells a little at the bottom, but for as neutral of a grip as it is, that the ergos really couldn't be any better. Um, again, it's not like you're holding a box, but it's not a Vox, it's just a Lundquist. It feels great. It really does feel fine. There's no hot spots whatsoever. The, 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 I wouldn't even call them points, but the angles back here, nothing digs into your hand. Um, it, it, it's just, it really is a, a pretty uh, simple and neutral joy to hold. Now, the pocket clip. The pocket clip is a huge factor of this knife, as I always say in front flippers, and it's excellent. It is 
excellent. It's a flat top. It sticks up. It really gives you something to hold on to when you're going to flip the knife and use it in any way whatsoever. You got that really good grip. I would give anything for the Reverie to have that pocket clip. I mean, look at the difference you have. Look how much more you have to hold on to. That is critical. If the Reverie had this knife, or if the Reverie had this knife, if the Reverie had this pocket clip that the Delorme has, it would be, again, another home run. Still a fantastic knife, but man, I wish that pocket clip was more like this, and it would just be absolutely perfect. Um, you know, but as for the handle itself, I, I really do love it. I love the sim the symmetry of it. It is just it it looks it's so pleasing to the eye, and it is just a fantastic design. It it it, it looks just as good closed as it does open, and but for different reasons. When you open it, you have the attractive blade, and it goes down smoothly into this nice handle. But when it's closed, it's still it's just there's nothing there's nothing on this design that looks like it shouldn't be there. It's just a very well thought out, um, very satisfying design. Another thing that I find really impressive is just how solid this knife feels with a two screw construction. And what I mean by that is you have the pivot up here and you have this, uh, not a backspacer, but the back screw right here and that's it. That's the only two things holding this knife together. And I gotta say, super, super solid build. Um, Kaiser did a fantastic job of this. I, I Some people get a little leery of two-screw construction, but listen up, guys. This is the thing. You're not going to use this like a fixed blade. You're not going to use this like a hinderer. You're not going to use this like any super heavy-duty overbuilt knife. If you are, go buy one of those and don't buy this. This is not made to be like that. This is an EDC knife that is going to perform plenty good enough and take on just about anything you have to throw at it as long as you're not throwing it or beating on it um this two screw, two screw construction mark my words and and i'll you you got my seal of approval on this this is plenty sturdy enough for 90 plus percent of your edc tasks as long as you're not uh you know working in the construction industry or doing something ridiculous to where you're beating on your knives all day um, it's a very, very durable build, very solid, and uh, the fact that it's two-screw construction makes it really impressive. So I like that a whole lot about this knife, and uh, it, it just it, it takes away a little cleanliness from less screws being on the handle, and it just looks really, really good overall. I also like the little highlights you have there, the gray and black. I, I love the neutral colors on this. Um, the, the, the little, uh, lines here that is kind of just, uh, I, I guess we'll call it a Lundquist marking. It's, you've seen it on a couple of his other knives, uh, specifically the, the Reverie here. I think they look good. And I like the way Kaiser did this all with G10 to keep the cost and weight down. Um, just the little touches of gray and especially along the pivot. I like that. It's simple. There's not too much. It just looks really, really good. Very, very subtle touches, but they, they go a long way. And to top it all off, um, with every Justin Lundquist design that I've ever experienced anyway, you have very nice access to the liner lock. Very simple to close this blade. And it, this is a, a perfect little uh, switch into the action here because you close this blade and it falls shut. Absolutely excellent action on the close and just as good if not better on deployment and this is where we get into this tab here with the perfect jimping it opens effortlessly flips right open does not need any wrist whatsoever and the detent on this guy it, it for me, it, it feels a little light, but I, that's not a knock. The detent on this knife is perfect for this knife. It is a little lighter. If you shake it hard enough, you can shake the blade open. That doesn't matter. I don't care. The, the detent's perfect for me. Uh, reach around, a breeze, every way you could possibly deploy this knife. I can probably do it with just about every finger. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'm not as coordinated and nifty with my hands as I thought, but... Index finger is an absolute breeze, as is the thumb, and it just opens so, so well. Um, it's definitely strong enough to where you're not going to easily break it. You definitely feel the detent 
releasing when you flip it open but it just it's so satisfying it's extremely extremely fidgety knife um excellent fidget knife for for what it is for being just a top flipper and, and nothing else you know you can't middle finger flip this knife you can't even pull it open with two fingers so it's something to consider if you don't like front flippers maybe it's not for you but i would also say if you're on the fence about front flippers and want to try one out even with the somewhat of a minimal flipper tab this guy has here i i i would almost i, I think i would i think i would recommend this to someone as a first front flipper because it's still just as easy, but in a di different way. I always say the Civivi McKenna is a very easy knife to front flip, and it is, but this is is, is very easy in its own way because you have a very different uh, method of front slash top flipping, um, and that's right here, but it's done so well. The, the, the detent is nailed, the jimping, the tab, everything is nailed, and it just flips open with a breeze, and it's so much fun. The moment I got this knife in the mail, Guys, I've been I, I've had it at my side when I'm watching TV or, or doing anything, just, just just fidgeting with it, and it's so so it's it's just an absolutely fantastic knife. Even sounds good. The sounds are pretty you know generic. They're nothing too unique, but oh, just a very nice crisp thwack. Closes very well. Excellent excellent knife. Just a joy. Overall thoughts on this knife. I tell you what, this is absolutely a knife of the year contender in its respective category. And if it's not somehow in the top three, I'm going to be blown away by the rest of the knives coming out this year. I, I, I'm i going to be very, very surprised if this is not in my top three. I love this knife. Um, love what Justin Lundquist is doing. If you want a, a, a very reasonably priced knife with premium steel, unique look, excellent action, look no further, guys. This is this is a fantastic offering. Um, I'm I'm not gonna not gonna beat around the bush here. I love this knife. Love everything about it. Kaiser De Lorme, look it up. I had it on Blade HQ. I'm sure it's gonna be coming to all the other major retailers. Give it a check it out, guys. Snag this one up. It is a gem. I uh, I, I try so hard not to say gem because I don't want to take any. That's kind of like a Nick Shabazz copyrighted term. My bad there. It, it's a fantastic knife, an excellent knife. Um, check it out, guys. Let me know what you think. The Kaiser DeLorme. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.